about our initial flight and uh, what our plans are and what our flight plans are? Uh, well, we're doing an hour. I think I want to put more fuel on board the airplane if we're going to do that. Um, if we're going to do an hour, I would say take off, kind of sightsee a little bit, get the feel of the airplane. Okay. Um, we'll probably go down the beach about 1,000 or 1,500 feet, depending on traffic, just kind of get a nice look at the whole thing. I'll take you up to altitude around 3,000, uh, let you get the feel of it for light flight controls type thing, try some uh, vibes descents. I'll take us up another probably 2,000 feet or so, and we can start doing some aircraft if you like some rolls, some weight rolls, that type thing. All right. Like if I said to you, if you, you, know, I, you know, I can have the controls sometimes, so if I say to you, 3, 2, 1, break right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Can you do an aileron roll? Oh, yeah, I'll do aileron rolls. You'd love it. Yeah. yeah. I don't really recommend loops. They're kind of hard. Okay, yeah. Loving rise on you and everything else and the airplane and me. I've got to do lots of rides during the day. sensation of coming over the top of the loop without all the g-force blowing up and the uncomfort and the wear and tear in here yeah and the pilots okay now how about do we want to do any uh, uh i know we're, i just saw you do low approaches do we want to do uh, some touch and goes or do we not want to do touch and goes yeah, we really want to don't want to do the touch and goes type situation that's going to be high wear on the landing gear tires all right uh in training purposes we wouldn't do touch and goes we do full stop full stop uh this airplane you're going to be taking off between 51 and 61 inches of airplane pressure, depending upon your condition. Now, how about the P factor? If you come up on the power too fast with this airplane, which it does, okay, then it's not only torque that's involved with this airplane. The gyroscopics on that propeller are gigantic. I actually have a 500 pound propeller seat. So that is 12 foot in diameter. So, guess what's going to happen? Is that thing's changing pitch. You have a lot of gyroscopic precision. So that's one of the things to watch. We're going to make small, gradual movements on the power. I'll handle it and show you how. I'm going to be able to turn it off at certain times. Take off the landing on those. It's all the line. It's the torque. Uh, rotation's going to be about 100, 110 knots. Okay. Uh, I'll get the gear up immediately because this thing accelerates very fast for its gear speeds. Okay. Uh, we got 140 for the gear. Okay. Uh, right. So that's, that's about it. normal. Yeah. Now, what about over the fences on the way in? Over on the fence on the wind, well, depending upon our wind condition, I can get it down to about 110. The airplane's very sloppy. Okay. Uh, I do about 120 knots. So 120 knots over the fence. Uh -huh. And then our touchdown is what? Probably somewhere in the 100 neighborhood. I'm, I'm, never, I'm never really looking, to be honest. It can go down as low as in the 80s. Uh, I mean, the stall is down there. Collapse. It's actually surprising. But it's a low stall. I mean, it's going like, you know, and it's going to drop the wind. Right. It's probably going to drop the wind. It's going to be back. It's going to be back. It's going to be back. The airplane is a fairly aggressive morphodon if you're getting out and maneuvering in the airplane. And then 150 knots of 2G turn will accelerate the speed. And then 250 knots is 4G. Okay. Oh, trust me, the airplane's going to be like, it's just coming from the ground. I'm really happy to push this thing. It's going to like that. Okay. Uh, but there are a lot of pilots out there that do not have that feel, and they just start blocking up, and they get like really tense and death grip. Like I said, if you're flying like this, this airplane's going to give you tough time. So it's, uh, it's actually a lighter touch. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's like touching a wound. Uh, yeah, that or like I tell people, like you're checking a pulse on a patient for a doctor, okay. that type situation. Okay. Uh, that's kind of a nice analogy in the situation as well. Um, pretty straightforward on all those areas. I'm trying to think of any other issues. Um, Speed-wise, we'll be cruising at about 210 knots. We'll be at about 36 inches of manifold pressure and about uh, 2,400 RPM on the propeller. So, so we're 36, 24. Uh-huh. How many gallons of fuel is it? At that rate, we're 60 to 65 gallons. And what's the maximum? <coughs> what's the maximum capacity? Uh, right now, in the current configuration that we have, we have 180 gallons of fuel. Okay. Uh, so that's how that works. Um, so we're going to need probably a mat uh, probably about 100 gallons of fuel right now when we get for one hour flight, just to give us a little bit of extra. Yeah, by the time you can take off and everything else, because it's through the roof. On take -off. And if we were going to a more altitude like that, our uh, our fuel. Yeah, I can drop it down way back on that, but, you know, we don't need to push the engine in the storm to your point. Uh, aerobatic settings, what do we use for anything? If we were doing vertical, we'd go to our uh, blind 
settings which would be 40 inches manifold pressure or 25 foot per feet. Uh, for anything that's horizontal plane, aileron rules, point rules, you can do over half or so the regular settings. Um, like I said, take off, we're going to be pulling 55 to 60 inches. And the mixture on this here, how does that... Uh, uh, it's automatic compensating. It's all okay. the pressure aneroids and everything else, so it has no friction on the lever. That makes that easy. Yeah. Makes that very easy. So that, that's how that goes. All that set up. So do you want to do the hour for yes, sure? Okay. Um, Let, let's fuel this up. Yeah, please. I'll take it in that right now. Uh, it's just whatever it's required to do it. And obviously, the smoother we bring up the power and the more gradual... Hold on. We're gradually bring up the power and smoother, uh, the less massive amounts of input of right rudder becomes more uh, which means the airplane stays much straighter, much cleaner, much happier. Uh, sometimes, depending upon wind and loading conditions, with the CG starting to move aft with heavier people, the airplane can get very squirrely. Okay. Um, I don't think that would be a problem all day for me, especially now, considering about, what I'm flying. How about brakes? Are uh, brakes just like standard brakes on a regular aircraft? It's a multi-stack disc brake assembly okay. of an older style. We try to using them as much as possible because they're 70 year old things. We can't get new rotors and set up for it, but it's expensive. Yeah, you know, it's uh, as far as takeoff's concerned, you never tap the brakes on these airplanes before you lift the gear. Let them spin into the wells. Oh, you do? Yeah, that polished strip, I forgot to show you on, on the pre-flight, that yes. really highly polished stainless steel strip you see on the inside of the gear well, yeah. that's actually a rub strip for the tire to hit to slow down on its own. And you will potentially notice a burning rubber smell shortly after takeoff. The tire's scruffy. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's there for. Um, seat belt's on, standard military with a three inch belt. Pull that to release absolutely everything on the belt. So that's how that works on that assembly. Fun fact with aerobatic flying on any of these or any military airplanes, they teach you always tighten the lap belt first. Make sure it's good and snug. The only thing this shoulder harness here is meant to be here for is to hold you from getting thrown into the instrument panel. It is not meant to pull you into your seat. Because what will happen is you can either really hurt these two bones right up here on the edge of your head, your neck, or your spine. So that's how that works. Here's some bag you know where that is. If you need it, I highly doubt you're going to. If you do, I did something wrong because that's going to be you're uncomfortable. That means I'm probably sick too. <laughs> okay. So that how it works. Um, positive transfer of flight controls on that setup. I have the airplane, you have the airplane. What yes, I'd sir. like to do is wiggle the stick a little bit so that way you have that authority. Now I know I have it, now you know you have it. So okay, very good. When I say you have the airplane, I'm going to jiggle the stick like that, and you say I have the airplane, jiggle All it. Right. And then when I want to take it back, you say you have the airplane, and I'll wiggle the stick. So when I, when I go to take the aircraft for the first time, we're going to be over at altitude a little bit. Yes. I'm going to, once I wiggle the stick, and I, I'm going to get this, I'm going to go and hit a gentle left aileron. Yeah, a, a left rudder, left, left aileron turn, yep. mm -hmm. and it's going to be an ascending left aileron turn. Mm -hmm. yep. All right, sir? So, yep. Uh, and then we'll go to the right from that point and have our fun. Uh, intercom action is yes. voice operated. Oh, it is. Okay. Keep the mic to where if you pucker your lips, you can touch it, and you're going to have to yell into it. This is a very noisy airplane. The intercom is going to go for the Zircon takeoff. Okay. Smile. All right, we're ready to go. And I'm going to let you know in one hour exactly what happens here. We're just going to have a little bit of fun. And really, this is an instructional flight. This is not a, a thrill ride or anything like this. This is just to have a general pilot's knowledge of how a P-51 operates. And it's a bucket list for myself. I'd like to thank Mike for, uh, for teaching me this and for taking all the time in this. And I hope that this will be an instructional video for you guys. And he's probably going to hate me afterwards because he's going to want to buy one. <laughs>